board meeting of August 5th, 2020. If at any time during this call you need assistance, please press star zero for the operator. Also note that this call is being recorded. And I would like to turn the conference over to Jonathan Quinn. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to all that are on the line. Welcome to the August 4th, 2020 meeting of the Chicago Board of Election Commissioners. My name is Jonathan Swain. I will be standing in for our chair, uh, Maricel Hernandez, today, uh, chairing the meeting. Uh, uh, Chairman Hernandez, will, uh, Chairwoman Hernandez, will be on the line. So, uh, first, let me call the meeting to order. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge that uh, on the line we do have Chairwoman Hernandez and uh, and Commissioner Cressy. That's me. Uh, yes. Great. Great. But. Uh, Chairwoman Hernandez, are you there? I am. Okay, great. Marvelous, marvelous. Okay, next item on the agenda is consideration of the agenda. Um, I've been informed that there's one matter that will be tabled, uh, which is item B under new business, a bill awarding contract approval with Probity Government Services for temporary staffing support for the November 2020 general election. Um, so can I entertain a motion to uh, table that matter? Uh, so, so moved. Uh, second. Uh, so moved by, moved by Commissioner Cressy and, and uh, seconded by Commissioner Hernandez. All those in favor? Aye. Commission, Commissioner Cressy also votes aye. With both parties voting aye, this matter has been tabled. Thank you very much. Okay, moving forward. Uh, we do have a full agenda today, so we're going to try to move uh, the meeting forward uh, quickly. We do have a uh, some time constraints on us, so we're going to try to move forward as quickly as possible. Uh, to make sure we have uh, the time for public comment. I know there are a number of people that have signed in looking to make make public comment today. So having said that, we'll move on to item four, approval of the minutes. Uh, of the minutes of the special board meeting of March 17, 2020. Can I entertain a motion for approval? Commissioner Hernandez, so moved. Commissioner Cressy, second. seconds. Have been moved to properly Christy, second. Second. Great, having been moved and properly seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Commissioner, Commissioner Hernandez, Cressy aye. Votes. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Uh, and the chair, the ayes have it. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the next item. Minutes of the canvassing board meeting of March 17, 2020, was reconvened and was adjourned on April 6, 2020. Can I entertain a motion for approval? No. Commissioner Hernandez, so moved. Um, this is Commissioner Cressy. Um, uh, Trish, uh, can you speak to that? Yeah, um, I, I, I apologize, Commissioner Swain. I think you have an older version of the agenda. This was not on um, yeah. the published agenda. Uh, because oh, it was okay. the April 6, 2020. It's a combination meeting, and those minutes are not available. Okay, fine. All right, so we will. I will draw the... Uh, draw the motion for the approval of this and we'll move on to apologize if it's not proven that I have an older agenda. Okay. Well, okay. We will draw that motion. Um, moving on then. Thank you, Commissioner Cressy, for that, uh, catching that. Um, Executive Director's report. Thank you, board Hi. members. Uh, just to let you know, as of 10 o'clock today is 89 days and 14 hours before election. So we have a lot of work to still do. As but who's know, counting? All the time. As you know, that we've got an additional space at 69 West Washington because of social distancing. The same thing we're doing with early voting and in the polling places. So we do not have a, a full early voting list right now. Uh, Mr. Hurd is negotiating with uh, the park districts, the libraries, and the schools on additional space. So that's being worked on right now. Uh, number two, the county and the city is working cooperatively on uh, new languages, and the county has uh, already hired other translators, so we will have those additional languages printed for this upcoming election. Number three, uh, the bar, I'm reaching out to the bar associations about having people on election day. Um, I know Adam has applied to... Uh, Adam, help me out on this uh, PPE, I'm not PPE, CLE credits.
for our attorneys that were working on it. I know you applied for that. Yes, so the board has now been approved uh, as a CLE provider by the uh, CLE board of the Illinois Supreme Court. We're waiting for the final versions of the training materials and uh, election judge handbook that would be the materials for the CLE credit. You can't get uh, accreditation on credit without written materials. So as soon as those are prepared, I'll then send those down to the MCLE board, and we're hoping that we'll get approval, final approval on that for the actual credits. So once I get that done, I'll start reaching out to the different bar associations. Uh, number four. Uh, 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 ex excuse me, uh, Lance, just on that note, I, I uh, just want to note the American Bar Association will shortly be uh, rolling out a campaign called Lawyers as Poll Workers. So we may want to reach out to them and, uh, you know, this should help promote the whole thing. That I, I did reach out. I sent them a letter. So we're working on that right now, all the Bar Associations, Commissioner. But thank Excellent. You. Thank you, sir. Um, Pre-trial detainees, uh, uh, I know Adam, uh, our attorney, is meeting also with uh, Jim Nally's, uh, Cook County's, uh, uh, Karen Yarbrough's attorney, meeting with uh, the Department of Corrections, and we have, are going to establish one polling place in the uh, Department of Corrections, and we're still in negotiations how that's going to be done, but we will be out at the, for two weekends at the Department of Corrections. Um, another item that we had happen at the last election, uh, we got uh, calls from hospitals at the last uh, minute about uh, vote by mail and about registration. Our office has reached out to all the hospitals in the area to uh, register people, send out registration information, and also uh, for people to apply by mail, to vote by mail. So that's going on right now. I have a meeting today with the uh, Overseas Voting Initiative Program. Uh, 45 days prior to the date of the election, we need to send out our ballots for the military and overseas voters. So we're working on that. But as of right now, uh, everything seems to be going well. Uh, I want to thank staff for doing a yeoman's job on all the work that they're doing. All of our managers are working quite hard. I want to thank my executive director, Charles Holliday, for keeping everything together and making sure I don't pass out with all this work that we have going on right now. But everything's going well. Great. That's as brief as I can make it. I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, Lance, can you uh, speak just a couple things real quickly? H how are we doing with, with and maybe it's mighty for Charles, uh, how are we doing with the lesson judges? Charles is going to handle those, those those items for you. Okay, that's fine. I'll, then I'll skip all of those. Can you also speak to very briefly, though, um, the equip, equip for Equality and kind of what's going on with that in light of everything going on? Well, we're meeting with the Equip for Equality. I had a meeting with them yesterday. There are some items that we still have to uh, work on. In fact, with the Equip for Equality, uh, maybe not every polling place will be 100% accessible. So we are going to offer curbside voting at every one of our early voting sites. I spoke to uh, Patrick Johnson, who is the uh, uh, person from the Department of uh, what, Justice Department that's working on this. And we're putting some uh, information together on that. So as soon as I have a, a draft of it, I'll be sending out to the board members. But we have, a, and I know uh, I met with them yesterday. I know Adam's having a weekly meeting with them. So we hopefully will get everything put together. Okay, Mr. Swain, I'm just, this is Adam. Uh, let me just add to that that the surveys of locations are ongoing through all the, uh, through the city, sister agencies, and ourselves. And um, we are continuing to move forward with the accessibility settlement project in a, in a very good fashion. Um, nothing has changed since I previously reported to you that the, the Department of Justice itself, they've internally considered the Chicago project to be the model to be followed uh, elsewhere across the country. So we're working hard to keep it on track, even with all the coronavirus complications. Great. Thank you. Are there any questions for Lance before I move on? 
Okay, great. Uh, moving on. Mr. Holiday. Good morning. Can you hear you, commissioners? Uh, uh, to speak to the vote, uh, the judges uh, on July 21st, our shy poll worker application went online. So far, there have been 1,955 new judges that have applied. The committee persons were um, sent the shy poll worker account so that they can start assigning judges to the vacancies in their wards. Since their deadline is September 4th. Uh, our election coordinators that served in March were mailed to ask if they would serve again. We mailed out 1,946. We had 1,645 already respond yes to work again, and we had 220 new election coordinators to apply. The registration department has in house 4,000 registrations to process. 692 on the online registration system. Uh, from the mail canvas, as of yesterday, there has been 44 trays of undeliverable mail return, which totals about 15,400 pieces of mail, all of which have been will be scanned and sent a second notice that's forwarded to a new address if the voters have moved. We've added three new scanners to assist with the scanning of the return mail. As of yesterday, we have over 195,000 vote-by-mail requests in the system. We have received approximately 20,000 return applications that are not in the system yet. We have received over 12,000 vote-by-mail requests through the uh, Illinois Voter Registration System. Even though these numbers looks pretty good, but there is still a low percentage in 23 wards of voters who have applied. So it looks like more outreach needs to be done in those wards. Uh, a scanner has been Charles. added. Yes. Charles, can you stop right there for a second? Can you give mm -hmm. some indication as to, uh, is there any kind of uh, indication of the ward that where, where, the, where the reply has been low? Yes, I, I, I have a... Uh, a draft of it, I can send it to you. Or if you want me to read off the wards, sure. I can do that. No, I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 I guess from the last look I looked, I want to make sure it's still consistent. From the last the report that I saw, um, what I did see was a lower, a lower uh, application rate from a lot of the the south and west side wards and the black and brown wards. Is that still consistent? That is still consistent. Okay, so that makes up basically the 23 that we're talking about? Correct. For part. Yes. Okay. All right. Continue. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm still working with uh, HR and um, the procurement on um, making sure that all our PPE material are in place for the returning staff in the next coming weeks and days. Um, and just attending meetings with Mr. Goff, and Adam and other, and other staff with, uh, to help keep things moving and being processed in the office. That's all I have for today. Great. Are there any questions for Charles? Uh, yes, uh, Charles, with regards to those uh, wards that are showing a, a low return, have we uh, contacted or will we be uh, working with the aldermen from those wards? Uh, Commissioner, we can. I just um, did my comparison this morning, so um, I will give it to uh, Mr. Goff, and then we can sit down and to advise some type of plan to reach out to these wards. Thank you, sir. Okay, great. All right, uh, moving on. Communications Director, Jim. Good morning. Uh, so we've launched the Korean and Tagalog pages in tandem with the start of the mailings. The Canvas mailing has consumed a lot of our time over the last two weeks, making sure that we sent applications to all the necessary parties, uh, all the necessary voters, and also um, that we didn't send applications to people who had already applied, obviously. Uh, we were able to handle a couple of last minute adjustments the State Board, for example, sent us a file on the 23rd of July that had a list of voters 
who had previously been registered and voted in other jurisdictions, we didn't have that voter history. So they were alerting all the 108 election jurisdictions, here are the voters who have previously voted in other jurisdictions that you need to send applications to. So overall, the, the mailing was successful uh, so far, and it, it did uh, beat the deadline, and uh, we're, we're processing the results right now. Um, next, we've finished the vote by mail envelope certification uh, with the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, that's been an intense project. We went through about 15 versions. This, uh, the envelopes are changing in that they're going to be qualified business reply mail. So that automates the, both, we're going to be automating both the outbound envelope better as well as the return envelope so that it will not be individually weighed or counted uh, before it comes to us. It'll come through an automated process. We, we think that's very important. Uh, given the volume that we're going to be handling. Um, next, we've uh, completed some outreach with the Greater Chicago uh, Food Depository. Uh, we're going to have materials that go out. Uh, they're, they're, work, they're looking forward to working with us, and we've developed a brochure called Register, Vote, Serve. Uh, we've also uh, created new URLs on the website that are simplified, so chicagoelections.gov slash registration, uh, chicagoelections.gov, vote by mail, chicagoelections.gov slash jobs. Uh, so these are going to uh, offer people registration forms um, and vote by mail applications and then information on serving as a poll worker. Um, beyond that, uh, we've been posting information on the electoral board and we're continuing to work on other envelopes and forms and signage. Uh, yes, Commissioner Cressy here. Uh, Jim, uh, with regards to the design of the new inbound uh, uh, ballot envelope, uh, those will still get the uh, the barcodes uh, when they get processed by the Postal Service that would show us uh, the, 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 the date that they're processed by USPS, correct? Yes, uh, they're going to have the intelligent mail barcode. Uh, we're we're doing it slightly differently with Hensley Company, the company that's processing the envelopes, but it's a, a very similar process to what we did uh, in the spring. But uh, yeah, we're going to have the tracking system again so that every voter who supplied us with an email address will get uh, an independent or individual uh, web page that will allow them to track their ballot. Right. I um, just want to make sure that, you know, in lieu of a postmark, the, uh, these, these envelopes will be getting a barcode from which we can tell when they were deposited in the mails. That is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Lance uh, and, and Jim, uh, before I move on, I, I want to uh, ask you a question about something that Jim just raised with respect to the, the talking with the post office and getting the vote by mail envelopes secured. Um, it's obviously, there's been a lot of news about the uh, slowdown in delivery of mail uh, that's going on. I know he's in, in, the, in, in the neighborhoods that I'm in, spending time in. Um, can, can you speak to any of your conversations and anything with respect to this in terms of, since we're going to rely on the post office a lot for mail, um, in terms of your conversation with the post office about ensuring that we can get mail out and back in timely fashion? I can uh, comment that I did uh, reach out to the Election Assistance Commission and told them what problems we're looking at. There is a, a couple of uh, groups that are out there working with the post office. Um, I've also spoke to uh, certain elected officials about the issues with the post office. So I think we're on top of it. Once we get everything put together, we're going to meet with the Postmaster General here in Chicago. And uh, it'll probably be a big meeting because I know we'll have some other people with join us to see what we can do about uh, correcting these problems. If we can get these ballots out early enough, we're hoping that we can use not only the post office to return the mail back to us, but also if people do not trust the post office, we'll use our drop boxes that we'll have at least one in every early voting area outside of every early voting area. 
So we're going to do everything we can to make sure we get those ballots out and in. That's why we've concentrated. And I am so proud that the mailing that we went out has already hit, and we're starting to get trays back now. Okay. Great. So I think that's something we need to keep our eye on as we move forward. It should be a topic of conversation as we move through uh, every meeting as we get closer to the election. Um, you know, one of the things I guess we'll, we'll discuss as well is uh, in light of Charles' report that uh, certain neighborhoods, black and brown neighborhoods in particular, are underperforming when it comes to vote by mail applications. But there's going to be a big question about, and I think Commissioner Cressy raised this a little bit, um, about how do we get word out to those communities. Uh, in particular about, you know, trusting the vote-by-mail system, uh, applying for vote-by-mail so we don't have a rush at the last minute and then get caught in a situation where there's the, the questions about delivery of the ballot. So uh, let's just make sure we continue to continue to talk about that as we move forward if we can. This will be the number okay. one. This will be number one on my uh, report at every board meeting, Commissioner. Great. Thank you, Lance. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all very much. And let's, let me just commend as well um, – uh, all the entire staff and everybody that's working on this election. You know, people always talk about how every election is the most con consequential election of our lifetime. You know, I, I don't comment about that, but I, what I can say emphatically is that this is the most unique election of our lifetime. So um, we appreciate your flexibility of all the staff and committing to the work that needs to be done and going above and beyond. So we're looking forward to a, a, a challenging election, but a successful election nonetheless. Uh, moving on, old business, any uh, infrastructure projects or changes in election administration? Uh, nothing right now. Okay, great. Um, let's try anything on electronic poll books? Uh, we have uh, ESNS at the warehouse now prepping <coughs> poll books for our upcoming election. Okay, great. Um, anything on voting equipment? We do have Dominions uh, down with the State Board of Election on an upgrade, and it's, it's being done right now as we speak. Great, great. Uh, on, on that matter, um, Commissioner Cressy here, uh, Lance, uh, did we get the uh, second Allegiance machine? We have already ordered that. As soon as uh, Cook County is moving their Agilis machine out of 69 West Washington, and I've already spoken to uh, the county clerk uh, who the county clerk has been very cooperative. When they move their machine out, we're going to put our machine in so we can hook both of our agilises up together. Uh, we're going to go through the wall, and uh, we will have that all up and running. Commi yes, Commissioners, there's also one other item to report on the uh, voting equipment. Um, we're preparing to do outreach to the Federation of the Blind and others because uh, uh, Adam has done some work um, and determined that we're going to be able to offer the Yulkava ballot accessing system. This is not an online voting system, but it will allow someone to access their ballot online and that will allow uh, blind voters to participate in vote by mail and still cast their ballot privately and independently. So Dominion is working with us on that too. Uh, Adam, anything else? Well, the General Assembly is not in session and hasn't been and won't be for a while, but I do have an update from the State Board of Elections. During its meeting on Monday, it voted to repeal Section 225.30C of its administrative rules for this November. Um, this was a rule that um, under, the, under the new legislation passed for November, when you look at the plain language of the rules, it appears to not require a signature on a, a paper application for a vote-by-mail ballot. So the state board had promulgated a rule stating that you should not reject a vote by mail ballot application due to lack of signature. Um, no signatures are required on electronic vote by mail applications. That's from the pre-existing sections of the election code. Anyway, point is that they've decided, uh, after reconsidering their own rule, they've looked at the legislative history and apparently determined that the legislation as drafted would suggest that there's no signature required on that application is not what was intended by the legislature and therefore they have repealed their rule on that uh, suggesting that we do need to uh, require a signature from the voter on a paper vote by mail application even though it's not required on the electronic applications uh, just to be clear we are not talking about the return envelope that the ballot actually comes to us with that that ballot obviously very clearly must have a signature that will be 
then reviewed by the three-judge panel. Uh, but that's all I have on anything slightly related to legislation. Right. Any questions on that? All right. Thank you all very much. Uh, moving on to new business, item A, a bid award and contract approval with Johnson and Quinn for printing, mailing, and mailing of the 2020 uh, pre-election household candidate. Um, Opa, did you want to speak to any of this? Sure. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, this is the Canvas mailing that Jim Allen uh, alluded to in his report. And um, as you know, this is our official request and approval as we are asking to enter into a contract with Johnson & Quinn for the August 2020 mailing has already actually occurred or, and is occurring right now. The procurement department had to do an emergency invitation for bid. This happened back on June 16th due to the, the time constraints that we were under. Uh, we received six bids. Johnson and Quinn was the lowest responsible responsive bidder, and their total bid was 150800 This was approximately $14,000 less than the next lowest bid. Um, I'd also like to note that Johnson & Quinn is partnering on this contract with a certified MBE company, Montenegro. They will be, they've purchased the paper for, for this mailing. They're also partnering with the WBE company, a certified women-owned company, Husky Envelope, uh, to purchase the envelopes for this mailing. And that totals approximately 22% <coughs> total spend for the contract. We're asking for the term of this contract um, to begin July 1st, 2020, and to expire on December 31st, 2020, with two one-year options to renew. Any questions? Great. Any questions? Okay. Hearing none. Um, Thank you. I'll entertain, I, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve a contract with Johnson & Quinn, Inc. in the amount of $150,800 with the term to begin July 1, 2020 and expire on December 31st, 2020 for printing and mailing services related to the 2020 voter canvas and increased vote by mail applications and ballots. Is there a motion? Commissioner, this is Commissioner Hernandez. I second. Great. Uh, so moved by Commissioner Cressy and seconded by Commissioner Han uh, Chair Hernandez. All those in favor? Aye. Commissioner, Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Hernandez in votes aye. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Uh, moving on. Uh, item B has been tabled. Uh, let's move on to item C, contract approval with A&E data solutions for website content services. Um, who's going to speak to that? Is that O4 with you or Jim or Adam? I could I could speak to that or Jen. Sure. Um, since 2013, A A and E Data Solutions, previously K Design, has handled our web content management, um, and this summer has been particularly challenging for them. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, normally they would be processing daily vote by mail uh, application reports from the online system typically only the, the last 25 to 30 days before Election Day. And this summer, it's been every day since June 16, and we took the system live. Uh, they've managed our, our content very well. This uh, summer, they've added Korean and Tagalog. Uh, there's an increase to handle the increased responsibilities related to the online vote-by-mail system. Uh, they've done a great job in terms of working with Rahul Patel, uh, they've expanded their staff to accommodate us uh, through this challenging election, and uh, I, I am hopeful that the board will approve this contract. There's been an increase to the contract for things that are purely related to uh, vote by mail aspects of the website for this November's election due to the legislation that you know called for the, the substantial increase in vote by mail and so we do believe that uh, $26,000 of this contract qualifies under the Federal CARES Act for 
reimbursement to the board. Just want to point that out. Great, thank you, Adam. Any questions? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve a contract with A and E Data Solutions in the amount of seventy-four thousand dollars, with the term to begin June one, twenty twenty, and expire May thirty-first, twenty twenty-one, for additional vote by mail services, uh, website services, and for the November twenty twenty general election, and for standard website maintenance and support. Is there a motion? This is Commissioner Hernandez. I so move. And Commissioner Cressy seconds. Having been moved by Commissioner Hernandez and seconded by uh, Commissioner Cressy, all those in favor? Commissioner Hernandez votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. And the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to item D. Amendment to contract between the board and Lake County Press Inc. for ballot printing services for the November 2020 general election. Uh, Opal? Yes, this is, uh, we have an existing contract with Lake County Press, and this is a request to amend that contract due to the increase and, and all the projections and the specifications around the ballot printing, the additional languages. We are asking to amend uh, the existing contract with Lake County Press. We anticipate a total cost for these quantities, these increased quantities, to be one point three two eight eight seven two million. That's approximately um, five hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars over what our existing contract allows mm -hmm. for. So we're asking the board to approve this amendment with the additional dollars requested. Okay, are there any questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, a motion to approve an amendment to the board's contract with Lake County Press Inc. Increasing the quantities of languages on the said contract for a total estimated cost of one million three hundred twenty eight thousand eight hundred and seventy two dollars for ballot printing services for the November twenty twenty general election. Is there a motion? So moved by Commissioner Cressy. Second, Second by Commissioner Hernandez. Having been moved by Commissioner Cressy and seconded by Commissioner Hernandez. All those in favor? Commissioner Hernandez, aye. Commissioner Cressy, aye. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Okay, thank you. Moving on. Um, item E, uh, an amendment to contract between the board and Hensley, form formerly known as 3X Data, for absentee ballot fulfillment for the 2020 general election. Uh, Opal? Yes, Commissioner, this is an amendment to our current contract with Hensley Company, also known as 3X Data, to uh, fulfill the absentee ballot requirement for the Chicago Board of Elections for our 2020 November election. Um, this will consist of the absentee detainee, nursing home, and military absentee ballots, uh, as well as the increase that we are expecting in our vote by mail fulfillment. Um, historically, this has been a very labor-intensive process by Hensley, but they've come up with a more automated system. Um, and I will ask Jim Allen or, or Mr. Goff to chime in here as they understand the process more than I do. But I understand that they have a fully automated model that they will be um, entertaining this, this time, and hopefully this will save some, some dollars for for the board as we go along, but we're asking for a 1.05072 contract uh, amendment with Hensley data. Great. Are there any questions? All right. Having heard, having no questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve an amendment to the board's contract with Hensley Company. Increasing the quantities and services and languages of said contract for a total estimated cost of one million fifty thousand and seventy-two dollars for vote by mail, ballot printing, and mailing services for the November twenty twenty general election. Is there a motion? Motion by Commissioner Hernandez. Seconded Second. by Commissioner Cressy. Seconded by Cressy. Having been moved by Commissioner Hernandez and seconded by uh, Commissioner Cressy, all those in favor? 
Commissioner Hernandez, aye. Commissioner Cressy, aye. All right, uh, Dad, I have it. All right, thank you very much. Moving on to item F, an authorization for the board to enter into a short-term professional services agreement for public relations and community outreach services in relation to the 20, 20, November 2020 general election. Lance, do you make, want to make some comments on this to start? Are we, oh. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Adam, uh, I met with uh, two representatives from two different uh, groups, and uh, they have submitted uh, proposals to the board. Adam, do you wish to comment more on that? Well, I think that we, you know, there was a, a group of candidates for the position, and the, the, uh, they submitted proposals. Uh, it's not a, a bid requirement because we're capping this contract as a short-term contract at $100,000. Uh, the commissioners have had opportunities to review the various proposals, and uh, so we're ready to have action on that and move forward with it today. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Marisol, did you, were you about to say something? Uh, n n no. I, well, I, I have reviewed the, the two proposals. And uh, both are, um, I think, very competent. Um, but um, I, I saw uh, an uh, advantage with uh, Kibbit, the Kibbit uh, group. Um, and uh, I think, um, as we were speaking earlier today, um, we were talking about uh, the brown and black uh, areas of our city that have a low um, uh, uh, vote by mail registration and vote by mail application numbers. And um, after looking at both of them, I thought that uh, Chibbit uh, would be much more able to fill those kinds of needs um with their uh it's 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 it seems like it's a solid group that's been around for a while uh they have done research and data uh for different audiences um and uh, uh their messaging um uh was uh seemed to be uh just uh what we what we need and uh in terms of uh, uh other things like media relations social media uh and uh, reaching out to underserved communities they already have people in place and uh and uh, uh equipment and, and and analysis that they could use um, this is, as you said, a short-term contract and, um, and uh, very important, just as important as well, I think they have a diverse staff that we need um, to try to uh, get these underserved communities to come out, register to vote, and vote by mail. So for those reasons, um, I... Uh, would move to um, uh, to uh, approve a contract with Kibbe. Okay, I have a motion on the floor. Let me give an opportunity to Commissioner Crafty. Do you want to make a comment? I appreciate that, Jonathan. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, of the two, uh, I believe, again, I think uh, my impression we were <laughs> looking for a spokesperson and I think the other organization would be better in that uh, in that uh, description it would uh, uh, provide you know the, the, the breadth of experience and uh, breadth of uh, connections necessary to be successful in that and as I think I've made uh, clear individually uh, to the non-commissioners uh, who might be on this call, I have serious concerns about the background of some of the folks um, 
uh, involved with Kibbit and uh, uh, would uh, uh, be very careful uh, with regards to which individuals from that organization will be working with us. Um, uh, so I, I will continue with my uh, with my concerns and, uh, and 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 again feel that the other candidate uh, is in fact a, a superior candidate for the job as it was originally and I believe continues to be described. Um, thank you, Bill. Um, let me just add a couple thoughts on, on on this matter. Since I've been on this board, um, you know I've. I have been speaking consistently about our need for outreach to um, the African American community in, in particular. I know Lance and I have talked about that on, on numerous occasions, uh, considering that you know effectively uh, uh, we have positions that have reached out in the, in the language capacity to other uh, other um, other uh, uh, communities that Lance and I are the only kind of representatives to the African American community when it comes to 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 the Board of Elections. So I've always been concerned about the depth of our outreach in those particular areas. So I'm excited to see us working with a group that can, that can help us penetrate um, um, the, the, the community with messaging. And I think that's important for a couple of reasons. I think that's important. One, because uh, this, is a new, this is a very new election. Everything we knew about elections before is now changing before our eyes because of the pandemic. And so I think that uh, we have to be more intentional about our communication to that community. I'd also ask, have to say that we need to be intentional about communicating to younger voters as well, considering that they may not have been engaged as engaged in the process just because they are younger. We need to find better ways to communicate them to them through the various channels that they have. But I also say I'm excited about this because of, I've been watching the numbers on vote by mail um, returned applications for the past uh, few weeks, I think, uh, if that's not correct, Jim, but the past few weeks. And what I have been noticing is the same trend that Charles mentioned, which is that the, the, the wards where you see the lower return of vote by mail uh, applications that have been sent out, um, or, or vote by mail applications generally, typically are in black and brown communities. And so I think it's important that we are much more intentional about the message that we can, we're conveying out to the community about the, the efficacy of vote by mail, the, the comfort they can have in vote by mail, especially as we there are a lot of unknowns still going for every single week and every single day with respect to this pandemic, and we don't know what happened, will happen between now and November. So I think that's the case. To, um, to uh, uh, and Bill, I'll add one other thing. Um, you know, the, the, what I, I believe that this particular group, and again, to be clear, that we're authorizing um, the board's also the authority to enter into a contract and that we're authorizing the executive director to do so as a technical matter. Um, but I also believe that this body will report to, to this board, and just as we, the three of us, um, manage the, the, the issues of this board, make sure that things are done in a fair and, and transparent manner, um, I'm sure we'll do the same thing with this particular contract to make sure things are done um, in, a, in a fair way. So um, having said that, um, there is a motion on the floor to authorize the executive director to execute a contract with Kivit in an amount not to exceed $100,000 for a term not to exceed one year for public relations, community outreach, and media spokesperson services in relation to the 2020 general election and post-election canvas. Is there a second? I will second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. This is Commissioner Hernandez. Uh, I, I, uh, all those, uh, I also vote aye in this matter. Is there uh, uh, any other votes? Commissioner Cressy votes no. Commissioner Cressy votes no. So in the opinion of the chair, there are two yeas, one nay. In the opinion of the chair, uh, ayes have it. Uh, the motion ha is approved. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving on to the next matter. Um, item G, approval of special services agreement between the board and JPA Consulting Group. Adam, do you want to speak to this a bit? Thank you, Commissioner. Um, <clears throat> JPA Consulting Group, other, um, also known as Jim Allen, uh, has been extremely uh, <laughs> working extremely hard with the board on all kinds of matters involving uh, the increased vote by mail for this November. Uh, my, in my eyes, Mr. Allen has far exceeded his normal uh, role as a spokesperson and has become quite the election administrator and, and executive consultant with the board. 
Um, and it, uh, I think, particularly now with Kivik coming in, uh, JPA Consulting, Mr. Allen will be able to work with them and, and help them understand the ways of communications with the board, but also um, not be so tied up with direct dealings with the media so that he'll be able to help us continue uh, as a valuable asset on the inside, getting the work done on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so without any changes to the prior terms of his uh, contract, uh, that's what's on the table for approval today. Great. Are there any questions? Hearing none, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve a contract with JPA Consulting Group, Inc., in the amount not to exceed 12500 per month with the term beginning July 1st, 2020, and expiring then December 31st, 2020, for election administration, communications, and executive consulting services in relation to the November 2020 general election. Is there a motion? So moved. This Commissioner Chris. Um, I, I second Commissioner Hernandez. Great. Uh, having moved, been moved by Commissioner Cressy and seconded by Commissioner uh, Hernandez, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. All right. Thank you very much. Moving to the next item. Um, uh, um, uh, the approval of professional consulting ag services agreement, excuse me, scratch that, approval of, of a professional service agreement between the board and Jason Brown. Uh, Adam? Jason Brown is being proposed to the board uh, as uh, the individual who would be re re taking over the responsibility for recruiting, training, and managing the board's team of election day field supervisors that are dispatched from and report to the board's election central helpline uh, telephone center uh, on election day. Um, Mr. Goff uh, is going to be the ultimate uh, responsible. You know, Mr. Brown will, re will report to Mr. Goff, but he's also working extremely directly with Clint Hurd, who's the board's manager of the pre-election uh, voting and logistics department. Um, I don't believe that Mr. Hurd is on the call today, but Mr. Goff is if you have any additional uh, questions. Uh, but Mr. Brown brings a solid background of experience with uh, the Chicago Police Department. Uh, he will be uh, recruiting at least one supervisor for every ward. And again, this is going to be in conjunction with Mr. Goff's efforts to bring um, an attorney in to every ward as well so that the, the field supervisors will work uh, in tandem with attorneys in every ward. Great. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve a contract with Jason E. Brown with a sum total not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars, with the term beginning upon execution of the contract and expiring on December thirty first, twenty twenty, for professional services as manager of the board's team of election day field supervisors. Is there a motion? This is Commissioner Hernandez. I move. So move. Uh, seconded, seconded by Commissioner Cressy. Seconded by Commissioner Cressy. Uh, having been moved by Commissioner Hernandez, and seconded by Commissioner Cressy, all those in favor? This is Commissioner Hernandez, aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. All right, moving on. Um, uh, next <coughs> item H, approval of a renewed employment contract between the board and Lance Golf. Uh, Adam, would you like to speak to this contract for the next 20 years? The 20 year contract, correct? <laughs> <right? laughs> uh, 20, 20, 20 year contract. Um, <laughs> well, the, 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 there's, um, there's a heavy penalty clause too, if I recall. <laughs> <laughs> a no, no early termination clause. Mr. Goff has been trying to retire from the board for 20 years, um, but we haven't been letting him. And under this agreement, we would be nailing him down yet again through November 30th of this year, um, at which time Mr. Goff would uh, retire on. Uh, no longer be with the board as of December 1st of this year as an employee, but he has been quite the executive director for quite a while. Um, as the board has previously discussed with him during these meetings, we we would like him to stay through this November election, and so we would like to bind him with this contract so that he doesn't go anywhere before then. Uh, this would be for the same salary terms as were agreed upon in 2015 by the uh, Cook County Board of Commissioners. Great. 
Uh, are there any comments, questions? Uh, I just hope right. that by the time he ends, he's learned enough of this job that he can, you know, spread his wings and fly. <laughs> And with that, I so move. All right, we'll, we'll, uh, hold, the motion, hold the motion one second, Bill. Um, I, I want to make one quick note. Um, obviously, this is a very bittersweet um, uh, motion here, considering that you know, this is, as Lance has talked about, retiring for many, many years and made mention of it at the last uh, board meeting, uh, city council and Kitt County board meetings of retiring and, and after the primary. We're grateful that in this uh in this unusual circumstance, we agreed to stay on past the, to, to the end of the November election, which, I mean, honestly, I don't know how we could get through without him based on all the experience in this kind of 100-year type of of, 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 uh, of election. So uh, that stated, uh, even as we approve this contract, I want to make note and make public that we will be making an announcement about uh, Lance's replacement as executive director at our next meeting um, of the Board of Commissioners. So um, as we're executing the, or ex approving this motion, oh, there will be an announcement about that at our next meeting. So uh, there is a motion on the floor to approve an employment contract with Lance Goff as Executive Director of the Board with an annual salary of $150,000 with a term to begin upon execution of the agreement and to expire on November 30, 2020. Is there a second? Yes. Uh, this is Commissioner Hernandez. I second. Having been moved and properly seconded, all those in favor? Commissioner Chris, Commissioner vote Hernandez. Aye. Commissioner Hernandez, votes aye. Uh, in the, in the uh, opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Um, and the motion is approved. And Lance, you have your uh, you, you have your marching orders. <laughs> um, Congra all right. Congratulations, congratulations, uh, Lance, and uh, say, thank you for everything. I want to say thank you. I think. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and Lance, you've been here before, so who knows? We may have to vote on a similar motion uh, or, or contract again in, uh, come the end of the year, but we'll see. Take a fork in me, I'm done. No, no, no. <laughs> well, so I think I think I think Josie has a plan for taking some place on December first, so I don't think that'll be an issue. <laughs> anyway, I, okay. Uh, uh, next item, approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the board and the Cook County Clerk's Office for shared use uh, of the joint petition project. Adam, you want to speak to this one? Yes, sir. Thank you. The joint petition project is a computer program that helps run the electoral board records exams when there are objections filed to nomination papers of candidates and petitions for a referenda. The program was created jointly by the, this board and the Cook County Clerk's Office under the prior administration. It has been a, a very successful computer program that has allowed both of the two offices to share their records data that's necessary for a records exam that overlaps jurisdictions. There are frequently, for example, uh, an objection to co county board uh, candidates whose districts lie both within, well, anywhere they touch Chicago, but the Cook County Clerk's Electoral Board handles the case. So we can just supply them the data that they need and they can run their a records exam on their own on their end. And then similarly, uh, our board, Electoral Board, hears cases, for example, from congressional state reps, state senate districts that spill out into the suburbs, yet it's under our Electoral Board's jurisdiction. So the point is we, we use the joint petition project um, when Clerk Yarbrough was uh, elected to her office as the new Cook County Clerk. Uh, they reached out and, and asked for us to enter a, a formal IGA on this program. We we're happy to do so, and it's uh, uh, for your approval today. Great. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve an intergovernmental agreement between the board and the office of Cook County Clerk Karen Yarbrough for shared use of the Joint Petition Project Program for Electoral Board Records Examination. Is, is there a motion? This so is Commissioner by. Hernandez. Okay. This is Commissioner Hernandez. I will second. Having been moved and properly seconded, all those in favor? This is Commissioner aye. Hernandez. I vote aye. And Commissioner Chrissy votes aye. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. All right, moving on to item J, uh, amendment to a professional services agreement between the Board of Election Commissioners and 
Um, we have three that are before us today, and we'll take them individually, I think, is most appropriate. Um, so the first one is with uh, uh, an amendment to special service agreement between the board and lesser commissioners for the city of Chicago and Nayun Ha. Um, Adam, are you speaking to this one? Uh, unless, I mean, unless Mr. Goff would like to, but what my, my understanding is that um, Naeong Ha, who is a, a liaison, community liaison and language specialist in the Korean-speaking community, uh, has been working uh, more hours than anticipated under the original contract. We know that uh, Korean has been added to uh, the list of languages by the Cook County Ordinance that this board is uh, voluntarily complying with. And with increased outreach for vote by mail issues for the uh, upcoming November election. My understanding is that she's working more hours than was originally anticipated. Therefore, the, the staff has requested an increase of her compensation cap. Her, her hourly rate will remain the same, but the cap would be lifted to $90,000 from the current 72800 Great. Are there any questions? All right, is there a motion to amend the board's contract with Nayun Ha by increasing the compensation cap from, uh, to 90000 from 72800 over the term of the agreement for services as a language specialist and liaison to the Korean-speaking community? Is there a motion? Commissioner Hernandez, I move. And second. Commissioner Cressy, second. Commissioner Cressy, second. Having been moved, having been moved and properly seconded, all those in favor? Commissioner Hernandez votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Moving on, uh, we're approving a, uh, a amendment to, or looking to approve an amendment to professional services agreement between the Board of Election Commissioners and CU Alfred Lee. I'll, I'll take Adam at the same thing. This is for this, uh, 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 it's for the uh, language services to the Chinese speaking community. I'm going to take it, Adam, for the same. Uh, type of thing, uh, the need for more communication because of the nature of this particular election. Is that correct? That is correct. correct. Okay, great. So I'll entertain a motion to amend the contract, board contract with CU Alfred Lee uh, by increasing the compensation cap to 50000 from $39,052.50 over the term of the agreement for services as a language specialist and liaison to the Chinese speaking community. Is there a motion? So moved. Commissioner Cressy. Second, Commissioner Hernandez. Having been moved and properly seconded, all those in favor? Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Hernandez votes aye. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Okay, moving on. Um, uh, we're looking at an amendment to a professional services agreement between the Board of Election Commissioners for the City of Chicago and, uh, and forgive me if I do not pronounce this correctly, but uh, Rahika Bagmar. I hope that's close to being correct. Um, Adam, you want to uh, make a mention on this? When, the, when this contract was originally approved, it was for a rate of $13 per hour. Uh, since that time, minimum, raise, minimum wage has been, uh, been raised. And so the proposal here is to increase uh, Ms. Bogmer's rate from $13 per hour to $16 per hour, a little slightly bit more than minimum wage, but apparently the work uh, quality has been good, and so the staff is requesting that slight extra bump in the hourly rate, and also then to increase the cap on the compensation uh, for, uh, to forty-five thousand dollars from twenty-five thousand dollars. And it's my understanding there that um, Ms. Bogmare has more hours available to contribute to the board than originally thought. Uh, I believe that she had previously was also working as a second job, a prior job. And it was uh, we needed more work and she, more help than she could actually give, but now apparently she is able to do so, and so that is a request from staff. Great. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to amend the board's contract with Radhika Bagmar by increasing the hourly rate to sixteen dollars per hour from thirteen dollars per hour, and increasing the compensation cap to forty-five thousand dollars from twenty-five thousand dollars over the term of the agreement for services as a language specialist and liaison to the Asian Indian speaking community. Is there a motion? Commissioner Hernandez, I so move. And Commissioner Cressy seconds. Having been moved and properly seconded, all those in favor? Commissioner Hernandez votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. 
And if any of the chair, the ayes have it. Um, okay, moving on. And clearly, we, we're, we need to make sure that we are doing communicate, communicating uh, with the various communities uh, around the city about this election, and it seems like this agenda is reflecting that. So uh, congrats to all those folks, and we thank them for their, for their service uh, to, our, to these communities. All right, moving on to the legal report. Um, item A, a public notice of intent to allow remote access conferencing for electoral board hearings due to COVID-19 concerns. Adam? Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, as the board well knows, you sit ex officio as the electoral board under different hats, but uh, the same three of you serve as the electoral board for objections against candidate nominations and um, uh, referendum petitions. So the, that board will be convening this Friday. We had a slight, slight delay due to complications in the office, um, but we're going to get those cases moving forward on Friday. And I just wanted to provide a little advance notice to the public that due to the coronavirus COVID-19 concerns, we will be conducting those hearings uh, with the hearing officers and in front of the board uh, through video conferencing. And uh, we are already sent out the notices to the actual candidates and objectors who are involved with those cases. Um, and we hope that it runs smoothly. It's uh, no different really than how the Circuit Court of Cook County and the Federal Court in the Northern District of Illinois are continuing to conduct their hearings. Um, I'm very glad that we've got a team of hearing officers that are prepared to move forward with that and and uh, that's all I have for that uh, item of the agenda and I also do want to point out that the uh, I believe that the, there's there's the federal court lawsuit that extended the filing period and increased and excuse me decreased signature requirements for independent and new political party candidates for this November's election it's currently under appeal in the Seventh Circuit we've discussed that case previously it's my understanding that the briefing was completed this week, that the Seventh Circuit has already ordered that there will be no oral argument. So we are on standby to see whether they affirm or deny, or reverse, I should say, the uh, original order by Judge Paul Meyer of the District Court. And that's my Great. full week Thank report. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Um, and there's no action needs that needs to be taken on this public notice of the tent. The purpose is just to notify the public of the remote access conferencing for the electoral board. All right. That's correct. Um, we, and let me just point out, Commissioner Swain, I'm yeah. sorry for one more interruption. We have posted on our website the draft rules of procedure for the electoral board, which is a different board. Again, those, those rules do include this change to remote access. It appears the State Board of Elections has done the same thing. I think the county clerk's office is, uh, might as well. Uh, but, yes, that will be officially approved when the, the electoral board meets Friday to adopt its rules. And, and as I recall, Adam, those rules are a little bit different than the rules in the past because of the COVID-19 issues and the recent legislation from the state. Is that correct? That is that is correct. Electronic signatures on petitions has never happened before, so the rules are draft rules have been adjusted accordingly there. Um, in addition to requiring face masks and social distancing for any parties who come into our offices, either for record exams or in, or any in-person hearings if they happen. Great, thank you. So I encourage anyone that's interested in, in those electoral board uh, rules procedure to uh, take a look at that on our website because they are different than um, they have been in the past. All right, moving on. Financial report. Uh, item A, uh, uh, approval of a balance sheet and voucher listing for the City of Chicago 2020 appropriation, 20-03, uh, dated August 4th, 2020, in the amount of $1,091,000. One million ninety-one thousand ninety-five dollars and twenty-nine cents. Uh, is there a motion? The approved. Commissioner, Commissioner Hernandez, uh, I so move. Uh, Commissioner Cressy seconds. Uh, Having been moved, properly seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Commissioner Hernandez votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Great. Any of the chair that I have it. I'm going to take these last three uh, together, so I'll just read through all of them, and then we'll take the motion on them collectively. Um, item B, uh, balance sheet and voucher listings for the County of Cook, 2020 appropriation 20-03, uh, dated August 4, 2020, in the amount of $5,123,210.39. Item C, a balance sheet and voucher listing for the, for the City of Chicago, of uh, 2020 appropriation. Uh, uh, 20-04, dated August 4, 2020, in the amount of $416,675.11. Item 
and item D, the balance sheet and voucher listings for the County of Cook 2020 appropriation, 2004, dated August 4th, 2020, in the amount of $443,478.52. Can I get a motion to approve all three of those? A motion by Commissioner Cressy for all three. Uh, second. Commissioner Hernandez, second. Having been moved and properly seconded, all those in favor? Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Hernandez votes aye. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Uh, those matters have been approved. Okay, moving on to section 10, public comment. I understand there are some folks that are looking to make public comment. Is that correct? Yes, sir, we do. We will first hear from Joyce Good. Please go ahead. Uh, before before you start, this is Commissioner Cressy. As I do at the live meetings, I will be keeping a five-minute clock, and I will um, note when 30 seconds are remaining. Thank you, Commissioner Cressy. Okay, Ms. Good? Please you unmute there? your line. Good. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Ms. Yes. Good, we can hear you now. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, good morning and thank you for all your work. Everyone, I hear what you're doing. It's very impressive. I have uh, two questions. One is a general question. It's all both by mail. Um, will you please publicize widely the use of drop boxes, people are very discouraged about the post office. And uh, please tell the locations, the times that they can be used, the dates they can be used, and the safety features so that people will use them, and I think much more successfully than they might the post office, even though I see you're trying your best. That, that's my first, I guess, question and suggestion. My second okay. has to do with my own registration on a vote by mail where I did it online and then received just, I did it a couple weeks ago, and then just received uh, several days ago uh, an application in the mail from a vote by mail 2020. And this is very confusing. It was confusing to me at first, too. The vote by mail 2020 in its letter does not connect itself in any way with the board of uh, Chicago Board of Elections. It just says here is will any questions asked us. And it wasn't until I really examined the application and saw a, a barcode and an official stamp that I realized that this is an official application. I think some clarification should be made. Any comments you have about either of my questions and suggestions would really be appreciated. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Good. I'll, I'll say a couple things uh, with respect to that. One, um, it is intention of this board, as you probably heard through this meeting, to make sure we're communicating most effectively to everybody about the differences in this election. And one of the things we will be communicated, be communicating is the drop boxes at the early voting site. So that will be a part of our communications plan to uh, make sure that the city knows uh, there, there's various options. And in, in addition to that, if there, we'll definitely take uh, under advisement the, the latter point that you made to make sure we're providing clarity about the communications that are going out. That will also be a part of our communications plan so that people understand what is true and what is, um, well, what's coming from us and what is not. And, and generally all of our mail is stamped with the election mail um, uh, logo on it so you can know that it's the official election mail. So we we'll definitely take both of those under advice. So Commissioner Thank Swain, you. if I may, this is Adam. I just want to do I want to point out we have been getting a lot of calls at the board because it appears to be a political organization that sent out perhaps even statewide, uh, sent out the vote by mail applications. So it sounded like that might be what Miss Good is talking about. The the law does not prohibit political organizations or community groups from sending out vote by mail applications that are not sent by the board. Um, we've been getting lots of phone calls from people. I just want to point out that under the new legislation for November, when someone has applied for a vote by mail ballot through the board's online system, we then do not send out uh, an application to them to, to try to avoid these complications, but we can't stop political organizations and community groups from doing it on their own. Right. 
Thank you very much. Um, Thank okay, you. next. We will hear next from Dr. Laura Chamberlain. Please go ahead. Dr. Chamberlain, are you there? Hello? Dr. Chamberlain? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Hello? Okay, great. We can hear you now. Okay, great. Um, I just sent a, a revised list of questions to uh, Mr. Allen. Um, we have a lot of questions, obviously, about these elections, and we're going to be giving a lot of information out to a lot of voters, so we would really like to, uh, it to be uh, really clarified. So um, the first set of questions is about these uh, secure drop boxes, the vote-by-mail drop boxes, and that we're wondering about the security plans for them. Are there going to be video? Is there going to be video surveillance? Okay. Will the ballots be picked up regularly from these drop boxes, daily, every evening, uh, during early voting only? Are the drop boxes going to be there on November 3rd, the day of the election? Is that the last day that they can, the voters can drop these ballots into these drop boxes? And what is the last minute that the voters can drop them off in these drop boxes? So those are all questions. We also have questions about the chain of custody for these votes by mail. I'm going to list out my questions so that, that you guys, so that everybody has them clarified, and then maybe uh, you could answer by email. Um, so chain of custody for the vote by mail ballots is really, really important. Um, to know are voters allowed to, if they're worried about the post office and the drop boxes, are they allowed to walk into the early voting sites and give their vote by mail uh, ballots directly to the election judges? That's another question as well. Um, or and and also the um, the uh, election day polling places. So can they walk in? Um, there's a there's a law that says it's um, 10 ILCS five. Uh, forward slash 19-6 and 19-13 that talk about um, a person who's uh, returning an absentee ballot for any physically inca incapacitated elector. And I was just wondering if there was clarification about anybody else. So if a friend or a family member is returning a vote-by-mail ballot for a non-disabled voter, do they have to fill out, do they have to sign an authorization on the ballot envelope? So that's a major point of clarification that we would like. Um, we also would like to know if the vote by mail, since there's going to be such a huge return of vote by mail ballots, um, are, are there any plans to include it into the 5% retabulation? Um, it's, you know, if we get an 80% return rate on the vote by mail ballot, and we don't have any audits of these at all, so it's uh, pretty egregious from an election integrity point of view. Um, the next question is, are the ballot images going from all of the scanners, including the large scanners that count the vote by mail ballots, are they going to be saved for 22 months uh, as federally required? The next question is, um, is there going to be additional security at the polling places or additional education for the polling workers uh, because of the threats of disruption and voter challenges that we've heard from the Trump campaign, um, especially polling places in Latinx and black communities? And then a related question is, will the board allow challenges to the voter signatures on the vote by mail envelopes during the signature verification. And another related question is, how are the three-person teams for the signature verification being chosen? We'd like to have some clarification on all of that as well. And then um, you mentioned on this call that you were enlisting a Dominion upgrade. Um, is there any way that you could clarify for us why you need a Dominion upgrade? On um, what aspect of the voting system is there going to be an upgrade? and why why that was a problem we'd like some clarification and then um also on this call you explained online voting for the blind i didn't quite catch the details and not very many details were mentioned if you could uh, fill in that that would be really excellent as well and um clean council county must object to the use of uh, chicago public uh, department 
police department officers as election supervisors. In our work, we have found that the knowledge seconds. of election law is extremely lacking. So if lawyers are being recruited as poll workers, why can't they be recruited as election supervisors? That's our request. And if we could get an email uh, with all of those questions, you know, answered to the best of your ability, we would uh, love that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Chamberlain. You emailed that to Mr. Allen, I presume, I heard earlier. I want to clarify? Like 10 minutes ago, the revised okay. list of questions. The revised list. Okay, great. Thank you. We will definitely follow up on that. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Claire Tobin. Please go ahead. Ms. Tobin? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Great. I can. Go right ahead. Okay, wonderful. Yes, um, you know, I'm just um, uh, so impressed with uh, just the extent of the work that everyone is doing. And of course, you know, we being in the election integrity community will be finding things that, you know, like Dora said, need clarification. So I think it helps everybody. So one of my questions was, what exactly is, is the procedure or instructions for updating uh, a signature? And this particularly applies to people, you know, who are disabled. Um, and so I have a, a number of people who have asked me <laughs> that question. So I would like um, if that could be explained of what process is it what they should return the mail in um, application and that is the signature that will be used to be updated. So I'm just not sure about that. Um, that's one. Um, number two, I think uh, it was really, it's really important to be, have clear instructions about filling in the oval to mark a ballot and not use a check mark or, a, or an X. I believe that in uh, Georgia, that was a major problem in why many uh, votes were not counted. So I would really think that that's important to really stress that. Um, and then the third thing I would suggest is that um, there, there really needs to be some PR um, put out to refute all this uh, broad narrative that's being put out in the media. Um, and I think it would really, really help, and maybe, you know, Jim Allen would be working on that, uh, to give the public clear descriptions of the procedures taken to prevent fraud and, and all that, besides saying that there's no evidence and besides saying that it's a felony. That is not enough information. I think the public would really, uh, it would, be, it would help everybody to have um, clear enunciation of what the procedures are. That's, I think that's it, and thank you so much Great. for your work again. Thank you very much. Um, on, on the communication matters, we'll take those definitely under advisement and include those in our communication plan going forward to make sure that we are um, effectively communicating the efficacy of a vote by mail and the like. Um, and to, to the matter about updating uh, signature, Jim, do you want to speak for your briefly to that? Sure. Yes. Um, you may, we have a form on our website. Uh, we can also mail that out if, if anyone needs to call us for that. But also in the mailing that you referenced uh, with the vote by mail applications, we included language so that we are able to use that signature to add it to the uh, signature file that will be used for comparison basis once the, uh, the ballot return envelope is returned to us. So uh, we are in the process of starting to scan those paper applications that are coming in. Uh, if people applied online, they can use the mail-in form to update the registration. Great. Thank you, Ms. Tobin. All right, next. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Claire Gordon. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Go ahead, Hello? Gordon. Yeah, go Hello. ahead. Um, thank, thank you so much for the, all the work you're doing to make sure this election goes as well as possible. Um, I have a two-part question. Just quickly, can we get a transcript of this phone call? Is that possible? Because I, I'd like to go back over and hear it again. I, you know, just reread re it. Is that possible? And second, 
Um, backup judges. My question is, you're, you're going to have judges at all the polling places. Somebody, many people could come down with COVID-19 uh, days, weeks before the election. Uh, some, do you have a backup plan for another wave of illness should it happen hopefully not but you know there, there will be probably judges uh canceling or something else could come up some illnesses so i wanted to know what your backup plan was for that thank you great thank you so to the first question about the copies of this call um uh, jim can you speak to where this call has been placed i know when we were meeting in person we all the our videos were placed on youtube but and uh, how are you moving forward with this now we're still posting the videos on YouTube. They're just very drab now. There's no video of our attractive commissioners. After this meeting, it'll be posted up to YouTube on our YouTube page. So there will be a recording of this particular meeting. So you should be able to follow, um, follow there. Um, Lance, do you want to speak to the issue of backup judges? <laughs> yes. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner. As always, we will have a, a backup judges in case certain judges uh, pull out at the last minute. In fact, we're, we've been, we're working on that right now. We want to fill our full complement first, but then we will continue with backup judges. So we will have them available. Right. And, and, and I will also say, Ms. Gordon, it's something that we're continually monitoring, you know, day by day and week by week. Uh, as one thing we learned with the last um, uh, the last election is that things can change from day to day and week to week as this virus uh, either spreads or, or, or you know reduces its spread. So that's something we'll be watching and we'll be adjusting and asking about that as we go um, at every board meeting to make sure that the that the judges are um, adequately filled. Commissioner, okay. could I just, Commissioner, could I yep. just say one more comment, please? Wait, go ahead. Yeah. We're meeting, uh, we have a uh, every, we, uh, conference call with the uh, Office of Emergency Management on a regular basis. So we're staying up to date on what, we, what the COVID and other items for the city of Chicago. In fact, right now we're meeting with them twice a, uh, twice a month. Uh, next month we'll be meeting them once a week. So we will be monitoring, monitoring all of that. So I just want to let you know. Great. Great. And Thank you, Commissioner Swain, this is Adam. If I could just get one yeah. short comment as well. We, we do get a lot of you know calls from people uh, asking what they can do to help, not just from people but from community organizations. And the answer these days always is go recruit judges for us. Send, send your, your judge recruitments to us um, because even if in the unlikely event that we fill the, the regular roster, we are still looking for backup judges uh, to make sure that any cancellations on election day can be filled. So. That, that's just, you know, Ms. Ms. Gordon, thank you for your comments, and everybody else uh, who is from an organization here today. That is definitely a way you can help us for November. Thank you. Right. Is there anyone else? No other comments at this time. Okay, great. Thank you all very much for your public comment, and all the matters are being taken under advisement. Dr. Chamberlain, we'll make sure we get back to you on the, on the questions that you, um, that you submitted. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, there is no need for executive session uh, that I've been made aware of. Um, and with that, uh, we can move and, uh, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, first, let me thank everybody for joining on this meeting and bearing with us in this longer call as we go through the map, the business of the, um, of the election board. Um, we'll take a mo entertain a motion to adjourn to our next, what's our next schedule meeting, Adam? Trish, it'll be the fourth, uh, me, let me pull up my calendar, I'm sorry. It's scheduled for the 12th, well, the, 11th. the 11th, I'm sorry. Okay, um, so uh, we'll, we'll, why don't we do this? Why don't we adjourn to the call of the chair, because I know we might need to move that meeting. So yeah. um, we'll adjourn this meeting to the call of, uh, of Chairwoman Hernandez. Um, is there a motion? So moved by commission. Commission. <laughs> Commissioner, uh, we're pretty good. Go, go uh, ahead, take the motion. Motion, uh, for <laughs> motion by Commissioner Hernandez. Okay, and a second by Commissioner Cressy.
Great. Has it been moved and properly seconded? All those in favor? Well, Commissioner Hernandez votes aye. And Commissioner Cressy votes aye. On the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. All right. Thank you very much. The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The board meeting of August 5th, 2020 has adjourned. We thank you again for participating and ask that you please disconnect your lines.